over the following weekend, and, and unfortunately, uh, this, this past Sunday, we had the uh, tragedy of this young, young child dying. Uh, we've been very busy in consultation with the state throughout this whole process. We work with the state health department and our regional office under the state health department, constantly evaluating our situation. Today, we received additional notification that we had new positive test samples of mosquitoes taken from the Toad Harbor Big Bay Swamp area and another site that we had set up for surveillance in the town of Palermo. Late this afternoon, after further consultations with the state and with, among our staff here at the health department, we've made a decision that we need to undertake some aerial spraying. In order to facilitate this, we have already today uh, been in preparation for this by contacting the State Health Department and asking the Commissioner of Health of the State of New York to declare an imminent threat to public health in Oswego County. This is a step that helps us facilitate the process of bringing in aerial spraying. Otherwise, we've also contacted the contractor for aerial spraying. We've also been in contact with DEC, through which we have to work in order to undertake this process. We are making decisions to expand our surveillance areas, and we'll need to track the weather patterns because in order to spray for mosquitoes, the weather pattern has to be just right. I think it's very important that people understand the spraying is uh, undertaken uh, based upon our scientific data that comes in. And that spraying, when we do spray, is only a partial and temporary measure. Spraying knocks down all of those mosquitoes that are out there at the time that you spray. They will reemerge re within a week or two thereafter, and it does not uh, kill the virus in, in those mosquitoes. It's mosquitoes that reemerge and go out and bite infected birds and then bring it back into, this, into the area again. The most important message for everyone to understand and to receive is the fact that we all have to take personal protective measures so that we do not get bit by mosquitoes. Those that I'm sure you've all heard many times before, that that is to avoid mosquitoes where they concentrate, to avoid being out between dusk and dawn when mosquitoes are out the very populous, and then protect any areas of skin that might be exposed. This can be done by wearing a layer of clothing over those areas, making sure you wear socks, tucking your pants into your socks, wearing long sleeve shirts. And the remaining areas of skin that are left unprotected by clothing can be covered by an animal insect repellent. The one we recommend, which is probably most effective, are those that are carrying DEET, D-E-E-T. Be sure one reads the label on there because the DEET comes in different concentrations and there are specific instructions as to how it should be applied. I think that sums up where we are at present time. Very happy to take the did, did this decision to spray have anything to do with the criticism that this department has been has received over yesterday's announcement that you were not going to spray? No, we we do not do this in an emotional fashion. We we make the determination on the information that we gather about where the mosquitoes are and where there's evidence of triple E virus being present in the county. So this new data says. You, you, you feel necessary to declare um, an emergency? What we do is uh, we gather the, the data. So it's, it, we, we just made the decision that we should carry forward with the spring based on the information about how concentrated the triple E virus is and where it is. The decision to declare an emergency threat to public health is actually a uh, factor that's needed because this facilitates our ability to move forward and uh, facilitates our work with the Department of Environmental Conservation, which has some certain requirements. So that allows us to move forward to carry on with the spray. Do you have to declare an, a, an emergent threat before you spray every time? Uh, that's what we have done historically. So it's not required, but you've done it in the past? Uh, without it, we would necessarily have to do a lot of additional work in preparation with the DEC, which takes a lot of additional paperwork and takes a lot of additional time. Uh, you mentioned earlier that the uh, 
the mosquitoes that you found this year were in an unusual pattern, correct? Yes. Um, why did that not? Why did that not raise the level of concern to the point that the spraying should have been happening then? Usually, what we see is triple E first emerging down in the tote bay area, and we'll see it start to cook down in that region before we see it in any other place in the county. And we usually wash that, and as we see the sort of concentration building up, that's when we usually will make a determination that we spray. If it gets to certain levels, or when we see it start to sneak out of the swamp. This year, we saw first samples coming out of the swamp area and in other areas all at the same time. And so that made it very different. And it sort of changed our, our modus operandi. Usually we like to contain it in the swamp area so it doesn't spread out. But all of a sudden, it was out all over. So it was a different, uh, totally different pattern than what we're used to. What, what is the thought process that you go through then in deciding that that pattern did not merit spraying? Because it, was it that, that the virus was already out, or was it that it was over more populated areas? Or what, you know, what was the thinking? Well, well, there are many factors that go into it. So it's not one single criterion that makes us uh, come to the conclusion that we should spray. So it's, uh, but once it's out of, the, out of the contained area, the spraying is going to be less effective. So we look for areas where, you know, where it's changing. Uh, if you just go out and spray anywhere, you're not going to have the effect that you want. You want to be able to find concentrated areas of virus where we can go in and try to knock down the concentration. And there again, this is to reiterate the point that we do not eliminate all triple E virus from the county by spraying. We do not even eliminate from all mosquitoes that are present at the time. All the mosquitoes that are flying under the spray pattern are not killed. So it does knock it down some. It may slightly reduce the risk of contracting triple E from the infected mosquito, but doesn't eliminate. And I think it should point out the fact that these last two years, the cases of triple E that have been identified in central New York have contracted disease after we have sprayed. So it does not. Uh, eliminate the risk. Doctor, is the State Health Department on board with you on this? Uh, you've been in discussions with them, as I understand it, for two days now. Uh, uh, are they, are in, is there a consensus with the State Health Department that this is the course you should follow? Uh, let me correct your statement, because we've been in contact with them all along. We are always in consultation with the State Department of Health. And yes, they would be in concert with us in going ahead. So this letter that you're sending to the State Health Department, uh, you expect to get the go-ahead to do this? I would certainly anticipate that, yes. How far do these mosquitoes travel if they're out in the New Haven Scribe area? Um, what are the chances of them reaching into the, the, the cities or, um, you know, another part of the county? So the, the question is how far do these mosquitoes travel? Yes. But let's, let's redirect that a little bit. Let's make clear that we don't know which mosquitoes are out there are the kind that can carry triple E. And we never know which mosquito who's coming at you is, is likely to be carrying uh, disease. You know, there are other things like West Nile that also can be carried by mosquitoes. So mosquitoes themselves, they usually, uh, depending on wind factors, about the maximum uh, that they can travel for these particular mosquitoes that we're talking about. This is about nine miles. So there may be other pockets within the county that are generating mosquitoes that are uh, carrying the triple E. So, uh, and, and of course, there, there are many wet areas that might have the right types of uh, uh, environment for them to breed in. Uh, and so I'm sure there are little areas started here and there throughout the county, of which we can't identify them all. But we do have this one area down in the of the Nile Lake where there tends to be historically a heavy concentration. What kind of insecticide do you plan to use? Uh, that will have to clear with the DEC. I mean, and, and where will the spraying take place? Uh, do you have specific points that you're definitely going to spray? Again, we will reevaluate the data tomorrow with our regional entomologist that works for the state of New York. We'll review it with our contractor uh, because there are many factors that enter into the actual areas that can be sprayed. Will you be, would a priority be 
populated areas, I assume? Well, what we, well, that's a factor that we take into consideration. We, have, we take multiple factors into consideration. Population density and also the concentration of the triple D virus. To what extent is the cost of spraying a, uh, a factor that you have to consider? Cost has never been a consideration. I mean, how do you budget for that? How does that work? Well, <laughs> we need to we'll find the money somewhere. I mean, we've always carried forward, uh, you know, if we if made a decision in the past to spray, we have, you know, sometimes we have to do what we call budget modifications to transfer money from other areas and transfer it over in order to take care of this. But we've not never left. Uh, the dollars and cents issue stop us from spraying. You mentioned the West Nile virus. How did that come this year? Are you testing for that? We test for that, and uh, right now I don't have any confirmed reports of the West Nile in, in the county. Uh, I think you go down to Oneida County, and so uh, I'll let them come on. The West Nile was here to be down in the last couple of years. So may have been down the past couple of years, but this is the prime time for West Nile to start generating stuff uh, in this area. Is there a target date that you would like to actually begin spraying? Well, once we get going, we like to do it, you know, as soon as we can, as soon and, and when the right time presents itself. But as I pointed out, there's several hoops we have to jump through first before we can actually get that plane up in the air. Do you know how long, how long something like that would take, uh, let's say, to get the permission tomorrow? Uh, well, it takes a couple days to get the insecticide in here. It takes, uh, we have to do public notification over a period of time. Uh, so it takes, you know, four or five days or so before we can, once, once we pull the trigger, as it were, to get things up and moving. Um, you mentioned that basically you don't spray into the U.S. versus mosquitoes there, but over the past couple of years, at least I've been um, around, I noticed that in the same area, this keep popping up so like there isn't any way that you guys can take the better measures before somebody gets there or a worse or a child does to get that ball in motion to spray. I mean you said it doesn't knock it down but if it does why wouldn't you guys want to try to do that? That's that's what we've started the time as I said we try to look at where it's starting to build up and it usually builds up in that one area. And we see it sort of cooking along and concentration is coming up. And that's what we like to do because reaching a critical point, that's when we like to swoop in and knock it down. And uh, as I pointed out earlier in this conference, uh, we have sprayed the last two years. And uh, subsequent to that spraying, uh, two individuals have uh, contracted the disease in spite of the spray.